In today's video, I'm going to show you some really neat tricks to turn your digital video into a dreamy film look. And this is just not adding grain, right? This is adding some really cool halation and haze to your videos. If you're ready, let's jump on in. Before we start the video, a quick exciting announcement. We have some new gal merch. You can go to premiergal.com slash merch and check out three different t-shirts and a hoodie that we launched. And this one's my favorite here, the gal creative university design. We also have two different types of hats. We have the baseball hat with the gal logo on the back and a beanie in different colors. Cause as you know, I like to wear different hats when I'm filming here. We also have a keyframe my heart shirt, which I think is super cute that comes in purple and gray. And we also have a t-shirt that has has my classic slogan, jump on in in it in an extra soft style. So go grab some gal merch for a family, friend, or your fellow video editor for the holidays as a present. Thank you so much for the support and we hope you guys enjoy the merch. So first I'm gonna show you some manual ways that you can create a film look using built-in tools inside of Premiere Pro, but spoiler, there is some rendering involved. And then I'm gonna show you a quicker and faster way of creating a beautiful film look using Film Convert plugin and their new Hellation plugin and Hazy plugin as well. And just to note, this plugin is not subscription. I know we mentioned subscriptions in a previous video and nobody likes it, right? So what's really great about Film Convert plugins is you buy it once and you can keep it forever. All right, everybody, it's time for the free method. Let's go. So if you shoot your own log footage now and you import it into Premiere Pro, it will convert the color space into Rec. 709 for you. So you no longer need to apply those conversion LUTs to bring back in that color. Here inside my timeline, I have this stock footage that was shot in a log format on a Sony camera that I got from Artlist, but it wasn't converted to Rec. 709 automatically because the metadata was changed and Premiere Pro didn't recognize that this is log, but there is a workaround. We can go over here to the project panel, right click, go to modify color. And here, instead of saying that it's Rec. 709, we need to override this color space and say, no, actually it is S log two gamut. So you want to select that and press okay. And immediately you can see the colors have shifted. So this didn't magically do all the color grading for us. There's still some work to do. So let's go to the drop down here and let's try a couple of these different looks that come built in that Adobe has made. So let's try the Fuji Real 500D. You can see it's a little bit too dark for my liking at least. So I'm going to reduce the intensity down slightly. So it's completely subjective, right? This is color grading. We're artistically manipulating it. So then we can open up the scopes where the scope's at. So here it visualizes the brightness of the image and you want your image to have a lot of contrast. So you can see down here, it goes down to zero, the blacks, and these are all the highlights up here. So we have some good contrast. So you can play around with this until you get it to the point that you want. You don't want too much clipping happening. Clipping is when you can see it up here, it's clipping up at the top because it's super bright, but those are just the bright lights in the background. So that's okay, I think. So let's see the before and after here. It did a pretty good job. So if you wanna download the project files to see all the different effects that I use, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash premiere gal. This is looking better, but what about adding that film grain? There's no built-in native grain effect inside of Premiere Pro as there is and after effects, but there is a noise effect. So let's go over to effects and let's search for noise and grain. This is the free noise effect. If you drag and drop this on the clip, then go to effect controls. You can increase the amount of noise. You can also choose to use color noise or black and white. So now it just has a little bit more softness to it because of that grain. So far it's looking pretty good, but let's add some haze. How do we do that? So first of all, let's nest this clip. Let's right click on it and let's nest and let's call this Haze Baby. So now we're gonna double click on Haze Baby. So first we need to duplicate this clip, press Option or Alt on a PC and drag it up. All right, any guesses on which effect we should apply to this duplicate clip? I don't know. First is the Gaussian Blur. Let's go here and let's drag and drop it on the clip. And now we can just increase the blurriness. Then we need to apply the Luma Key effect to limit where we want the blur to be in the image. So if I drag and drop this on the clip, let's actually bring the Luma key above Gaussian blur. The order of effects matters. So as I change this, you can see that the whole image 
isn't blurry anymore. The luma key is limiting how much of the blurriness is happening to the bright areas of the image. So if I turn off luma key, it's just all blurry. If I turn it back on, it's only blurry in some parts. So now if I turn off this layer entirely, you can see it's more clear. And when we turn it back on, it kind of has this haze happening, right? So you really just have to play around with this until it looks the best to your liking. Now, the only downside of doing it this way is that you can see that there's a red bar right now and it's a little bit slow. So we have to render this out. So because it's such a long clip for this example, let's just do about eight seconds of it and let's see how long it takes. So for about an eight second clip, not great. Imagine having to do this on an entire video, right? The only thing missing is halation, which is essentially that kind of red glow that you see in films on the very bright areas of the image, which ultimately makes the brighter parts of the image a little bit more bright. So how can we make this using built-in effects? We're gonna leave the haze baby nest that we made and go back to our demo that has our haze baby nest inside of it. I don't think I would ever say this. <laughs> out loud in a normal conversation. So first we need to duplicate this. Press option or alt if you're on Windows and drag and drop it up. So now we're going to search for Cinean Converter Effect. And this is a built-in utility inside of Premiere Pro that I had no idea existed before. I'm gonna put a link down to the guy that I learned this from. So with the Cinean Converter Effect, in this case, we're going to go linear to log and we're gonna go to a zero black point and a thousand white knits to make it extra bright. So now you might be like, gal, this looks terrible. What is going on? Trust the process. Now I'm gonna go over to Lumetri Color and we're going to go to Curves and we're going to basically just cut out just the highlights. So if we drag this Luma curve, we can limit our shot to just the highlights here. And now we need to apply a channel blur to just blur the red channel to fake that halation. The only issue though, if you search effects for channel blur, like I did here, if you're on an up-to-date Mac and you're working on a Mac like me, unfortunately, it's gone. There's no channel blur. What the heck, Adobe? Where is it? An editor's note, Rickard told me that you can actually download the obsolete effects and import them. And thanks to Adobe Basics for making this YouTube video. And I'm going to right click and go to import presets. And let's go to the folder and let's import the obsolete effects. And now we should have channel blur underneath removed obsolete effects. So I'm going to delete this third party extension will not delete it. I'm going to remove it and let's put the channel blur on here. And now we can go in and add some red blurriness. Now we see the red blurriness, adjust it to your liking. And now we can go back up here to blend mode and go to screen and fit. And now this is the final effect using the obsolete channel blur. So here's a side-by-side -side of the original and our film look that we created entirely with built-in effects. And remember that you can always adjust this intensity of this look by playing around with Lumetri Color like I showed you. So as you can see, just rendering this one eight second clip with all these effects takes over three minutes, right? So that's why Film Convert is a great alternative. So here inside of Premiere Pro, I have the original log clip that I got from Artlist again. And remember before I told you to convert it to that log space, well actually Film Convert does that conversion for you. So when you right click on this clip, you want to make sure that the color remains in Rec. 709. That's one of the little tricks that I discovered. So you want it to stay in Rec. 709. And now let's go to effects. So let's go to Film Convert Nitrate and drag and drop it on our clip. Now the first thing we need to do is choose our camera. So let's choose our Sony, the FS700, this is what it was shot on, and let's choose S-Log2, apply. And bam, already it's looking much nicer. And down here you can choose the film stock and you can see there's so many different film emulations. It's actual film real color here, guys. So let's try this Fujifilm 8543 Vivid. And there we go. So as we go down, you can adjust the film size. So if you go down to eight millimeter, you can see it actually emulates what eight millimeter footage looks like. If you go to 16, a little bit less, and you have the option for all these different 35 
millimeter looks. So underneath grain response, you can control the size, softness, strength, and saturation of the grain. Usually I just play around with the size and a little bit of the softness here, just to give it more of that film look. Here is the before and here's the after. And look how well this performs. Like there's no playback delay at all. So now let's apply Halation, which is a separate plugin that you can get from Film Convert. Let's drag and drop it on our clip. And immediately we have this halation effect. We didn't have to go through all those different steps. You get that real film glow here. And what I really like to do is view the halation alone. So you can really see where the halation is and you can adjust uh, the strength using the slider sensitivity as well. And what color, typically it's just at the red in the beginning, but you can go down to magenta or make it more of kind of a greenish color. And you can also soften it before, after. You can also go down to advanced controls and you have a lot more control over the highlights, green channels, brightness, saturation, spread, boost, all of that here. But now their new plugin, Hazy. Let's drag and drop it onto the clip here. Now we have some more dreamlike haze, but first we need to go down and change this again to Sony. S-Log2. Here we have filter style. Look at all of these different styles. We can try soft. We can try smoke. Let's try bloom. And then you can adjust the filter strength. So if we do 20, it's like super dreamy. This would probably be great for like a dream sequence if you wanted to have something this intense. But for this, I'll probably just reduce it down to 5%. And there's so many other controls here that you can play around with if you want to. But we're pretty much done. And look at this playback here. This is smooth. There's no red bar there, right? And that, my friends, is a nice dreamy accurate film look. So here's the side by side of our free film look versus film convert. If you zoom in on the halation of the film convert, it just looks a lot more convincing, right? So while the free version is free and everybody likes free, right? The downside is it just wastes a lot of your time by sitting and watching the render. But ultimately it's up to you to decide what works best in your workflow. And right now film convert is actually having a Black Friday sale, which you can go check out. You can get an additional 10% off if you use my code Premiere gal and that also helps support the channel because I get an affiliate commission if you decide to purchase film convert at no additional cost to you. So hopefully this helped you achieve the film look that you're going for. Have fun, stay creative, and as always keep creating better video with gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.